my top 10 favorite niche fragrances of 2019. Find out what they are right now. Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh here. I just wanted to go over my top 10 favorite niche scents of 2019. I think I did a video for my top five like a long time ago when I barely got into niche scents and I probably ordered maybe a total of five. Now I've smelled, I mean, it feels like 40 to 50 niche fragrances. This has to be an original creation. This can't be like a copycat or something from like a fragrance copy house. These are original fragrances. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there. That's why you're not going to see anything from any copycat houses. So honorable mentions real quick. There's actually five really good fragrances that I could think of right off the bat. Honestly, the, all these 10 fragrances are very good too, but these five honorable mentions I did really, really like. They just kind of got beat out by another fragrance or they didn't make the list, but they're very, very good nevertheless. So honorable mentions, Ojan, Tobacco Vini, Red Tobacco, Coco Blanc and Oud Satin Mood. All of these are very, very, very good top tier fragrances, but unfortunately they couldn't make it on the list. I was kind of trying to work them in, but they just didn't make it. So on to number 10. Jubilation 25 slash Plum Japanese. Oh, this is, these are two fragrances that are kind of like, not too, too similar. Plum Japanese has that plum note. Um, Jubilation 25 has that blackberry kind of note. Exotic, well done, well blended vibe with both these. I'm trying not to do too many repeats on this list. So these are kind of like a style of fragrance that I really respect, but it's not my in my top five or anything like that. Okay, number nine and number eight. Number nine, I'm gonna go with Milseam Imperial. And number eight, I'm gonna go with Virgin Island Water. Two freshies from the house of Creed. You know, Creed has a lot of really decent ones. Green Irish Tweed is, is okay to me. I think it's solid. I actually do like Silver Mountain Water. They, those couldn't make the list. Number nine, Millicene Imperial. Just a really, really, really nice niche style, salty watermelon scent. I really, really enjoy it. It doesn't last too long, so I'm kind of looking for some alternatives to it that last a little longer, but a fantastic, fantastic scent. If you live in the hot weather and you enjoy any kind of sea salty kind of scents, I really, really enjoy um, Millicene Imperial. Number eight, Virgin Island Water. Everyone really knows I like this fragrance. I've gotten several copies of this fragrance so far. It's just a fantastic scent to me. It can lean a little unisex because it kind of features some coconut in there. Some people do say that, but I really absolutely love it for the beach, and I actually like it for the gym too. The only problem with that one, again, like Millicene Imperials, it does not last that long, but it just smells so good and so fresh. Had to put it in there. Um, just can't say enough good things about it. Love that stuff. Virgin Island Water, number eight. Number seven, by the House of Perfumes de Marley Percival. Now this one's one that people say smells like Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. It kind of smells to me like a niche blue Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. I really, really do enjoy it. Kind of didn't expect it from Parfums de Marley because usually they do these delectable, really easy to like sweet scents to me. This one came across really good and I actually do prefer it to Parfums de Marley Sedley. I will be doing a review on that very, very soon. But yeah, per Percival, if you're a fan of the old Fierce, definitely check it out. If you're a fan of kind of like a, a blue, transparent, really good, freshy, I definitely check it out. Parfums de Marley Percival, number seven. It's number six, one that kind of took me by storm, Maison Francis Kirkshawn's Grand Soir. Now this one beat out Ojon in my opinion. I do, really did like Ojon. It would probably have been like eight or nine on this list. This Grand Soir absolutely blew me away. An amber masterpiece. Just, just a fantastic, fantastic scent. One of the uh, Maison Francis Kirkshawn just has probably like probably the best overall blending that I could say. I mean, there's so many good perfumers like Perfumes de Marley blends really good. You know, Tom Ford blends these really unique, robust scents that I love. But Maison Francis Kirkshawn, he just does something special with, with these fragrances I smell. It's like something you smell before, but it's so special. And that's what was with Grand Soir. I'm surprised that it jumped so high up on my list for how many fragrances I've smelled, but it's a fantastic scent, guys. I completely recommend it. Number six, Grand Soir. Number five, Parfums de Marley, Carlisle. Now, this one actually blew me away, guys. Um, it's actually, it's probably going to be higher up on the list next year because, I, you know, people, when, when I first got it, people said it was a mix of Herod and Ojan. Um, I think they said that because it has this familiar Parfums de Marley DNA, this, far, this familiar sweetness. And to me, um, it's just a really, really robust scent. It comes off so easy to like and really smells so good. But then when you actually look up the notes, you can actually find out some, um, it actually isn't as cookie cutter and as simple as the other fragrances. It actually kind of is the best Parfums de Marley. If I'm going to recommend, you know, one to everyone, there is one that's higher on this list, but that's because I personally kind of like it a little more. 
um, but next year it's probably going to switch because if I were to recommend you one Parfums de Marley, it's Carlisle. And on top of that, Parfums de Marley has really good projection, decent projection, but Carlisle has through the roof projection. I mean, um, my friend and I, like I, I tested it, it was just insane. My friend and I, I we, we sprayed one spray on and we went in the water here just over and over and over and you could smell it at the end of the day um, swimming in the ocean for hours on your skin. I mean, barely, but it was there. It's just an insane scent, guys. Highly recommended. Number five, Parfums de Marly Carlisle. There's number four, Parfums de Marly Herod. Now, honestly, guys, this, this scent got me into niche fragrances. It's my very first Parfums de Marly. It's my very first bottle. I still really do like it, but just not as much as I did, to be honest with you guys. Like I said just before, I would recommend Carlisle probably to this one now because Carlisle lasts a little bit longer and it's actually more robust. The reason that I, I wouldn't say, I mean, I love Herod so much, it's great, but it's kind of like this damp, dark scent that sometimes can smell a little off and it's really nice having that really dark sweetness, but something like Carlisle, has that sweetness it's a little bit dark but it does so much other things so i would recommend it because this was my number one and because i fell in love with the scent it's hard for me not to put it anywhere but number four so number four parfums de marley herod number three this one's just hard to leave out because of how effective it is and the compliments and how good they are number three creed events us now this is one of those scents you could just spray everywhere it's like the most common niche scent in my opinion in the world some people said that that was like a lie but come on now what other niche fragrance is really getting bought more than Creed Aventus. I mean, Creed Aventus garners the most compliments. Um, even the clones of it garner compliments. It's just the most sought after scent, just the best, and it's so effective and I absolutely love it. Number three, Creed Aventus. Number two, it was definitely hard to make this list. And this one's one that I love since I very first smelled it and it, it retains such a high spot on this list. Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather. I just absolutely love, love, love this scent. But yeah, it's been copied by a lot of stuff. Some people prefer the clones. Some people say the clones smell just as good. But to me, I like the original Tuscan leather. It's just so thick, so robust. So just one of those scents that's just so over the top, so in your face, so in its own direction and so good. Minus the people that have copied it. Yes, if you copied it, um, it's not gonna be as unique as it was, but still, it's a fantastic scent. Sometimes when you just wanna be known, you wanna just say, screw it, I'm just gonna wear something big, something bold. Tuscan leather is one of the absolute best, number two. It's number one. I've said this was gonna be my number one. I've told it to be my number one, and it's not everybody's favorite fragrance. It leans a tad feminine. I could see people saying that, but I absolutely love it. Number one, Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirkshawn. Um, like I said, this was the this is the scent in recent memory that blew me away the most. I've kind of said this on like five or six videos, so I don't want to overly over say it too much. I absolutely love this scent. It was super hard for me to describe. They say it has all these notes online that I don't really get. The only thing that I could agree with is that it maybe has a slight, slight, slight woodiness. To me, it smells like transparent, slightly objecty strawberry cotton candy. That, that's the best way I could describe it. Transparent, slightly objecty strawberry cotton candy. It's just fantastic to me, guys. I mean, it just is a smell that's not necessarily, oh, that's super manly. Whenever I smell it, I, I just love it. It just takes me away to a good place. And I think it smells so, so, so amazing. It's one of those scents that I really feel like people would stop and be mesmerized by and have conversations with me with, but that has not happened yet. I don't really care. I just absolutely love this scent. And it's one of those fragrances that when I came across it, it really got me excited to be in perfumery. It got me excited that I smelled it. And it was so interesting finding out the story. Maison Francis Kirkshawn, you know, he used to make fragrances for other houses. Now he makes his own fragrance. And then when they first made back Rouge 540, it was a limited edition. It almost died off. They brought it back and it happens to smell the way it does. And you know, the more people copy it, the more, less great it smells because the, the clones do smell really, you know, spot on, but still. To pull that out of his hat, I just, it's a fantastic scent. I love it. Number one, Baccarat Rouge 540. If there's any other fragrances I should check out to be on this list next year, let me know. What are some of your favorite niche fragrances? Do you not buy niche fragrances? I'll be interested to see down below. Like I said, I'm always on the lookout for the next really, really good scent. Thank you so much for watching the video. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of your help. Thank you guys so, so much. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully you're having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.